Hey guys, I want to show you how to use Apollo CodeGen. This is a really cool library that allows you to take a GraphQL schema and turn it into types for Flow, TypeScript, Scala, and Swift. Now I'm going to walk you through how to do this on one of my own GraphQL schemas so you can get a feel of how this works. So the one I'm going to be running this on is the boilerplate that I've been working on, but here's what the schema looks like and I have the server up and running. So it's on localhost 4000 right now. And we're just gonna go through the readme of Apollo CodeGen. So the first step is to go ahead and install it, which I've already done, so make sure you do npm install Apollo CodeGen. Next, I'm going to introspect the schema, which means it's gonna look at your schema and then grab all the type definitions from it and basically create a giant output. So I'm gonna run this command and I'm gonna fix it. So localhost is running at the right one. So I'm gonna point it at where my server is. My server is running on localhost 4000. And then here's the name of what's gonna output. Schema.json is just fine. So when this is done running, we're gonna get a file called schema.json and we can take a look at it. And what this is, is a giant dump of our schema with a bunch of information. Now this is what it's gonna to use to generate the types. And you can see this goes on for quite a while. And notice our schema is not that big, right? This is a pretty small schema. So I can imagine if you have a couple files for schema that uh, the schema.json output can be quite big. But after you do that, and by the way, so I had to get, have the server up and running because it actually uh, makes a request to the server to get the schema from it. But you can also point it at a schema that is in GraphQL files like this. Okay, so next we're gonna tell it to generate uh, types based on that schema. Now here we can give it four different choices, whatever language we want. Personally, I'm gonna choose TypeScript, but feel free to choose whichever one you want. Now, if I run this right now, nothing will happen. And the reason for that is you need to tell uh, Apollo CodeGen which queries to generate types for. So automatically, it does not type the entire schema. It only creates types for the queries you plan on running or the mutations you plan on running. So what do I mean by that? Notice how there's a star star dot GraphQL um, in this Apollo CodeGen generate. What it's doing is it's looking for all the .graphql files and generating uh, types for that. So what I'm gonna do to get this to work is say queries and I'm gonna say hello.graphql. And in here, I am gonna put my query that I have. So here's my hello query. This is as basic as it gets. And now we're gonna run this. And when this finishes running, we're actually gonna get an error. And the error we get is does not support anonymous operations. So a lot of times I don't actually give names to my queries, but you can name them. So I'm gonna call this hello. And it'll go ahead and fix this. So that is one annoying thing. If you have a bunch of queries, you're gonna to have to name all of them to get this to work. Okay, so I have uh, it run successfully and this output is the file that it generates. So I have operation result types, and you can notice it made this little interface right here, hello query. So not much, but we can notice it is proper TypeScript, and we see hello string, and this is the expected output from it. But you'll notice it only did this query, right? So if I wanted more, what I'd have to do is add more. So let's say I wanna do this for mutations as well, maybe to create a user. Oops, dot GraphQL. And so I'm just gonna grab this in my history because I've run a create user before. And we'll just say use. So I'm gonna copy this. And let's go ahead and create one for this. I'll call it create user. And uh, notice how the names correlate to what the types are called. So now if I run this, we should have an extra type now in the types over here when it's done running because we now have a create user query. So notice how it created this. 
and you'll notice how I created this profile object and it could be null. So it will go ahead and generate all the types for this. But notice this is actually really the result of the mutation. We'll talk about more about that in a second. So whatever I name this, so I could name this Bob, for example. The name of that is what the type name over here is going to be. So you're going to want to make a name that makes sense for this. So for example, we have Bob mutation there. Okay. So what I like to do is actually just name it the same thing as the mutation in here, or if you have multiple mutations in there, uh, because uh, it makes it really easy to know. Create user, I just look for a, and usually it capitalizes this. So if it doesn't, I'm gonna just create a capital create users. And that way the, the type now is a capital C that I can use. Okay, so this is not super helpful though. Here's how you can get more information. So let's say I have a profile, which is going to be a profile input. And we're just going to pass that in here. So profile, and this is passing a variable. So this is just passing in a variable. And uh, notice in my definition over here, I have a profile input. So if you do specify, specify variables and a profile input like this, it'll go ahead and add those in the types as well. So if we come and look at the types over here, we'll notice we have a profile input, which has basically the type for the input and also the type for the variables uh, itself. So profile is the only variable that it's expected for this query. Now you may be wondering why this is helpful at all and this looks super limiting, right? Well, as far as I can tell, it doesn't seem to have any use on the server itself. Like, it does not help you type Apollo server whatsoever, the resolvers or any of that. At least, Apollo code gen. But, when using this in conjunction with your client, for example, if you're using this with React, and you're using TypeScript in React, and you're wanting to make requests to the server, Apollo Cogen is actually super helpful because you can create these type definitions over here which you can then use in your React application. So that's what I want to do in tomorrow's video. I'm going to show you guys how to actually take these types and use them in React and actually use them and make them useful. Because right now they're kind of useless in their current form uh, and really they're supposed to be used with uh, a front end or whatever client is going to be using these. Um, as far as, yeah, let me know if you guys have or are able to get this to work on the server as well. There does seem to be some other projects which I'm looking at, um, not made by Apollo, that will also create other types. We'll basically create a type for this whole schema here that we've generated. And then you can use it, for example, in my resolvers. So right now, these have like type of any and that sort of thing. Uh, we would like to get the exact type for the resolvers. And so really we don't need to do that. It should be automatic and picked up from the GraphQL schema. So I'm going to be checking out some libraries about that. But stay tuned tomorrow. We're going to be going over how to actually use uh, the types you generate from this and make these actually useful. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.